All right. Welcome back. So, sorry, the previous stream was cut because of a power outage here. Uh, all right, it seems like everything is working correctly now. Hopefully, we don't have any more power thingies. Uh, this is on. Seems like it's registering. Let me check the stream. <laughs> Yeah, seems like we're live. Seems like we're live. All right. Okay. Well, this thing, I think it's it's good. Uh, part one was more about theory about Linux and, and just me talking about crap, and then part two it's gonna be uh, more just installing applications, showing you some applications uh, that I use on Linux, and then we can move on from there. Okay. So I'm not going to waste any more time because we already talked a lot in the previous uh, stream. If you d haven't seen the previous uh, stream, I recommend you see the part one, which is not called part one, or however that is called in, in Greek. <laughs> uh, let me change to the camera here. Okay. Uh, is this one? Oh, we, no, that's not one. Is this? No. <laughs> Where is it? Uh, Crap, where is it? Oh no, maybe it's lost. Oh crap. I have to check YouTube because man, it would be horrible if it's lost. Oh man. I don't want it to be lost. Uh, yeah, that would be bad. Cause it would sell really good. Let's see what happened. Oh, I see it is there. I'm not sure why it's not on the. That is weird. Seems like it's public. Can you guys see it? If let me know if you guys can see it, cause I I don't know why I'm not seeing it on my channel. But it should be there. Wow, I don't see it. It's weird. Cause I can see it on my learn their way or so I'm gonna do some update something to see if it makes it available. I'll check it out, but there is another one. Uh, another chat we did earlier today about this and damn if I don't if I'm not able to put it on YouTube I'll download it I guess and then and upload it again it's weird because I can actually because <laughs> you can see here it's weird because there it is I can't see it here you can see this is learning X uh, I can put the link of this on the description of this one maybe maybe that will help you get it if, if for some reason YouTube doesn't show it because uh, yeah the thing is that we have a, we had a power outage here we were uh, we had some issues with that before and uh, and it was just really bad but now it, we're back so we were talking about installing applications on, on on Linux. So, and then here I'm using Fusion, which is an, an application that is really cool. Let me make this. Let me save this and make it bigger because this is really really small. But we can see a little bit of Fusion uh, as well, which is uh, one thing I use to replace uh, Photoshop on with on Linux. Uh, so let's just uh, let me just. Close it and save it. Okay. So we were talking about installing applications, and, and I had a I have a few applications here. We 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 install new, but let's just do it again because that was uh, a little weird. Uh, the uh, the uh, also the installer is a little weird. Let's let's check out, check out what the Foundry is saying about or Foundry. Sorry, they are called Foundry now. Uh, Let's see what they are saying about 
how you should install this thing. Yes, it's like there's not. Um, this seems like this installer is a new one for some reason. I don't know. They should. They used to have uh, a better installer for Nuke, but uh, it's sad they have this new one actually. Let's see. Download. There it is for Linux. So it should tell us. somewhere how to install it and see what they say on their on their official documentation uh, how to install licenses da, 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 new let's go to new section uh, installation and getting started let's see let's see what it says uninstalling automating something installation and getting started that's where we are uh, where is the instructions? There's no instruction or whatever. That's weird. That is really weird. Why is there no instructions? Installing. Let's just search here. Installing nuke left. Uh, man, this is so weird. How do you install the new Mighty Branch? That's not what I want. Installing Katana on Linux? No. This is weird. I don't see it. Huh. Uninstalling Nuke? This is for, where is this for, Mac or something, Mac OS, Linux, this is for uninstalling, what about installing, because they, they think we already know, I don't know, install, installing new on Linux. Installing on Linux, so here I go. Found it. So yeah, they say just do this, which is what I did. And then it says that, uh, did you need to install it, da, 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 and just launch it. Okay, that's really weird. This, this installer is just not, it's not good. It's, it's doing some weird stuff, but whatever okay so let's just do that again because we have a uh, new here I, I can delete this uh, let's try and delete that folder uh, I'm not gonna be able to delete it because I did it as a sudo so administrator basically let's see oh I was oh you know I was enabled just really de delete that folder called nuke really simple uh, all right, hey Michael, how are you? All right, so there, uh, there is um, so according to the documentation, we just need to extract this thing, extract it, and then we run this uh, run uh, file which they just said, uh, just do it. Okay. Well, we just launch Sublime. Okay, so uh, let's uh, just say, as they say, no, I don't want to just tell it a studio because I don't want to be messing with stuff. I'm just going to say uh, dot forward slash and then you type the name of the Thing you want to run in this case is this run command there uh, this run script uh, so this should be uh, if we open it 
we can open it now. It's not actually, it's just binary stuff. So we can just run it and it's gonna say, well, read the uh, end user license, which you should read. I just press Q to skip it. And then I just press Y to accept the license. It's telling me you accept the license, of course I do. Then it's saying that you wanna install, and then it's gonna install it here in this subdirectory. Yes, whatever. Y to just say yes. Uh, I guess you put, you need to copy it to where you want to put it before. I mean, this installer is a little bit uh, simplistic, I guess. Uh, it just doesn't really affect, I mean, accept much input. And if, <laughs> as you saw, if you saw the previous video, I just said no in that step, and it still just said, whatever, I'm going to extract it. I don't care what you say. So now we have Nuke extracted here, and then the only thing you need to do now is just uh, find the Nuke installer here. I don't think it created a no. It doesn't. It didn't create a desktop entry, which we can do uh, by hand, really. So you can see Nuke is there. I can just double click it, and it should run. So you can see now it's running. Uh, it's saying that uh, it wanted, wanted you to doesn't finalize it, whatever, so I'm just going to start it uh, in non-commercial mode. There's a button there, so uh, you need to author authorize this device, so I'm just going to do that, uh, whatever, my email. Uh, and my email is not showing, thankfully. So, invalid name or password, whatever. Uh, back. I don't even remember my password, I guess. Authorize device. Okay, there we go. So now I'm running the non commercial version here and it didn't launch it, so I'm just gonna launch it again. What? Oh, there we go. It's launching on this other window over here. So here it is. For those that were asking, like, actually, it launched twice, but it was actually, I guess, doing something. I have two versions of Nuke now here. I mean, two windows of Nuke. I can't close one of them. And since I'm on a 4K monitor, this is super, super small, so I can just make the text bigger. There is, I remember there is some, oh, there we go, UI, UI scaling. Scale uh, all. To I guess 1.5 I'm gonna do. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna do two because just so you guys can see it better. I'm gonna restart this. Exit now, and then you can launch it again. Start no commercial. I'm not gonna do anything with Nuke right now. I'm just gonna show you guys that it works, that it's there, and then it's just. Uh, uh, it even says there you can see this is non-commercial, so you can do stuff with it. So. Here it is, it's Nuke, it works just exactly as, as anything. I still remember how to use it. Press R to uh, input some images. Let's go to some more uh, media. Should have some images somewhere. Uh, let's see if I have some renders here. There are some EXR images here. There we go. You can see it. This is this is 4K images, reading out of my NAS actually. So they are actually this 4K images are being read out of my out of my uh, NAS through the uh, what is this the network and they they're pretty fast. You can see that's I mean it's not instant but it's pretty it's pretty fast. I can work with this. So. Yeah, yeah, I had to do a whale jump. <laughs> I did that. Yay me. Uh, so yeah, you can see Nuke works. You can do whatever you, you do with Nuke. I I don't I, I don't think I have any Nuke comps. Maybe I don't know. Let's try. Uh, should have added something here. Some kind of a. Shortcut, let's add that. No? Here. I forgot to use Nuke, I guess. Uh, 
Nope, there. Mix NAS, Mix Studio. Whoa. Mix Studio, let's set that as well. There we go. I should have maybe on, let's see. Luis. Maybe have some comps here from Luis. Comp renders. I, I don't know. Let's see if I have some comps here. Seems like it's opening. Or maybe not. I don't know. Oh, it's opening a new window. Okay. So yeah, this is another comp. This is not a comp that I did. This is a comp that my friend Luis did. Uh, Luis Montemayor did this comp. Uh, this is simple comps that we did for some uh, project. Uh, this path is just not correct, but uh, but yeah, I mean, Noob just works as as as. Same way it works on on any other uh, system, really. Uh, actually, works pretty good on Linux. Uh, I didn't know I can zoom in and out like I do in, in on Fusion. Actually, this is good because I just I'm just using my pen to zoom in and out and to pan, which is great. All right, so okay, Nook works for those that were asking. Uh, Nook works. Uh, you just install it like that. Uh, you can see that Noob in on Linux is just weird. It just creates this folder. It doesn't mean you can put this folder whatever you want, and you can just uh, use it. Uh, so that's great. Uh, on Pop, there is something called a la carte, which basically means menu. A la carte, you can run a la carte. You have to install a la carte, like just find it in the store and install it. Uh, I can show you the pop store which is the uh, the pop shop it's called where you can install stuff uh, for for Linux which is great. You can find a la carte there you see a la carte there is it's called main menu here the internal name is a la carte you just click a button here to install it and then it allows you to create edit your, your your menu basically I have one here for mix which is my own menu and I can just add a new menu and I oh, know sorry not a new, new item there I could call this nuke and I'll just browse to where I put that uh, that nuke thingy here uh, find the nuke install program here the great thing about Nuke is it comes with all the, its own libraries that need, so it just doesn't depend on, on other libraries to work. So that's great. I mean, you can run it any, really any system, uh, any Win uh, Linux system, and it's just gonna work great. There is, I think there's an icon here on the resources that we can use. Where's the icon? Resources, no. There is an icon here. Let's find it over here. Let's move this guy over there and say, everyone seeing my desktop still all right? Okay. Uh, I'm gonna find a PNG file. I think it's a PNG. There is a bunch of icons here. Oh, let's call, let's search for icon. Icon. Damn, there's a lot of icons. I... Nuke, let's find Nuke. There we go, you can see there is, there's a big one, there's two, 256, so we can use that, let's see where, where it is. Open item location, I'm seeing here in uh, Nuke plugin icon, so let's just go find Nuke, plugins, icons, and it was called what, Nuke app? Nuke app here, that one. So you have that, you have you press enter, and now you will have Nuke whenever you search. Like I can search here for Nuke, and there it is. Or I could just put it on my, they have a like a dash 
therefore, similar to to um, the Mac bottom thingy, or you can just put it anywhere you want, or just I, I'm just pressing um, the Windows key in in the keyboard, and it goes to this kind of overview of the Windows, and I can search like searching on my other monitor. So sorry for that, but uh, yeah, it does that. Yeah, now now you can just search that, click it, and run Nuke, and you can see it, it's there. It, it runs pretty quickly. That's another thing. It's just the apps on Wind on Linux just run super good. Like they they run pretty quickly. So there it is Nuke. You can just use it. Uh, do whatever you need with Nuke. Uh, the other thing is Houdini. Like Houdini comes with this. In this, let me do something over here. So there's some stuff that hopefully you haven't seen but you shouldn't. There you go. I'm just gonna do that. If you see some, I'm gonna just again right click and extract it because this is also a, a, a tarball. It's called a tarball. Uh, it's, it's basically a, a zip file. Same thing. You can have you then you you extract Houdini, you double click here, and then there's a script here to install Houdini. And if you don't want to do this, you can just install the uh, the uh, the launcher. Works on Windows and Linux and Mac, so you can install it from there. I really don't. I mean, I'm having issues with it, uh, but uh, it's good. So what do you do here? There is a Houdini install script, so you just run that. Like just say sudo. Uh, Houdini install like that and then you just run it and then it's, it puts your password again and then it, you can read the, the license agreement and you should read it and then you should at the end you say you agree to it if you don't agree well you're not gonna install it and then you just this is basically a UI I mean it's a UI in, in, the, in, the, in the terminal uh, again, if you don't want to use this method, you can use the, the, the launcher and it, it's, it downloads it for you, installs it in, in a place, but again, I've been having issues with it and I don't want to, uh, I, I need to report the issue so it's, it's a little bit better to use and, and then it's going to tell you what it's going to put, uh, it's going to, if you want to install a sim link of this, so, so basically if you run Houdini on the terminal, it will find this version. Uh, and then it's just saying that it's, it's linking to this. If you want to install the license server, uh, let me not install it because I have already installed the license server. And then you can just, for example, uh, the license server, if I don't want to install it, you just say here at the, at the bottom, I just say, uh, in this case, let's press 5 again, and then it's enabled. If I press 5 again, I disable it. If I install the Houdini engine for Maya or Unity, I say, let's say, 7. And see that is enabled, but I don't want to uh, do that. So let's just disable it. If you want to install the HQ server on client, whatever, and then it says that it's gonna install on this location. If you wanna change that, you can do it. I'm just gonna go for that one, and I'm gonna press F to finish, and then goes. And that's basically all you need to do. Uh, it says that. Uh, there are some files already there. I guess I already have this version installed. And then you gotta say yes to override whatever is there. So that's it. I mean, that's all you need to do to install it. And actually this Houdini script, it, it actually creates entries on, on your menu. So you after this is done, you will find this, this version of Houdini. You can see this is 5.23. You can see there is saying installing Houdini menus, which if you, have the menus there. I have the menus but out on my other screen. I can let's just change this, I guess. Displays. Let me switch this monitor to be the prime primary monitor. Apply. Uh, keep the changes. There we go. So this is the menu that I have. You can see here. Actually, no. There's no menu here. There is. Uh, I used to have a menu, but I don't use it anymore. But I have this bar at the bottom where I have my 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 
favorites. And then what I do is just, just search Houdini and then you can find Houdini, then just launch whatever version of Houdini you want. Uh, we have, we, we've been, we installed 523, so I just do that and I find that and I just run it from there. So this says that it was installed. Hopefully you're still seeing my, yeah, okay, cool. This was installed. Thank you. Hope you enjoy using Houdini and then you can see it's running. That's, that's all you need to do. Uh, and it's running Houdini now. I mean, it's pretty simple stuff. Uh, yeah, let's install something else that is a little bit more uh, simple, I guess. Like, let's say I, I downloaded this this application that is called PureRef, which is for references. Uh, you can just double click on it. This is a dev file, so I am on on Pop OS, so dev files are basically just pre-install or pa pre-packaged stuff for Debian, so. You can see it says in on install because I have it installed. But if you if you have it not don't have it installed, or we can just remove it. I guess it's gonna ask you for your password again, and then uh, just uh, you can see now it says install. You can just click install, and it's gonna ask you for your password, and then you can just run it. It's gonna run it, and it's just gonna install it. And a lot of applications are like this. Uh, some of the applications like Houdini don't have this thing, but you can really just uh, and then it, there it is, and then I could just say pure pure ref, and you can see pure ref is there, and I just run it, and then there it is, pure ref is is running. So this this box here, you can just drop images to it and and use it. So. I'm gonna close it. So yeah, I mean, it's pretty simple to install stuff. Like, I mean, let's see what else can we install from here. I have, I had Fusion install like two days ago, I guess. You can see I have this. This is the Fusion installer that you get from the from the website. Again, you just extract it. And Fusion is actually a little bit uh, more. I guess friendlier. Uh, you just just uninstall, un unpack it. There's a folder here. You just double click it, and then there is two installers. One is the render node uh, installer, and then this is the fusion starter. You see, this is a run command as well, but you don't have to run it from from terminal. You can just double click it, and it's gonna pop a little. Yeah, there we go. You can see it's a, a simple installer, just like any other system. Click next, and it says, "Do you want to reinstall it?" Because I already have it installed. Let's say yes. Did I close it? Seems like I did. Yeah. Next, and then it says the agreement is here. I mean, it's the exact same thing as in terminal. Like it's just a GUI next, and then start installing. And again, ask for your password because it's installing in a in a in a part of your drive that is uh, accessible only to the uh, administrators let's get it. let's call it like that and yeah it's gonna be installing now and yeah I mean if you, if you show this it's gonna say what is installing right now seems like install some help uh, some libraries there. So that's basically how you install stuff. It's pretty simple. I mean, and if you want, to there's some other applications like the the applications that are free that you want to install, and you just go to your. In this case, I have the Pop Shop, which is the like the the way you get applications in Pop, and there you can see there's even um, different sections here and and some. Uh, Suggestion here. Sorry if this is a little bit small for you, but I have a huge monitor. Couldn't go to the graphics section, and there's a lot of graphic stuff. Blender is there. I can start Blender for there. It tells you uh, somewhere what version this is. Yeah, there it is. 282. So this is a flat pack. I don't like to install flat packs really. Uh, this is another, which is a dev, and this it doesn't. Say what version it is. 
weird. But uh, you can also just search and say, let's, if you want to install Krita, which I already have, you can just find Krita there and then just say, click here to install and you will have, I already have it. Yeah, I have it. I don't know why it's not here. Maybe I installed the dev version. Yeah, I installed the dev version. Okay, cool. Um, you can install GIMP, which is the other guy that you can use for replacing Photoshop. You can see that I don't have this installed. Really? I should have it installed. Yeah, there it is. I have it installed. I don't know why it's not. Uh, see, GIMP runs pretty quickly. And you can do some photo manipulation here, cutting stuff from a picture, things like that. You can just do it here. If you want to do like a People use Photoshop for composing stuff and uh, comping stuff to to steal some stuff. You can use you can use Fusion for that. I use Fusion for that, and it's free. I mean, why wouldn't you use it? I mean, GIMP also has painting brushes and stuff, but uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, works. But uh, I think Creed is better for drawing and stuff like that. But yeah, I think I can create as better for paint, but you can do like photo manipulation stuff with with game and 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 it's it's good. I mean, uh, what is this a window? Ah, yes, this is the window that I did for the other corner. You can see this is that you have layers over here. You can create different layers and things. Somebody is asking for my password. Uh, Create another layer here. Come on, what can I click on this thing? You can create another layer, paint on the other layer, and that's another layer. I mean, that's basic stuff, right? So, yeah, that's how you install things. I mean, the other thing that uh, that um, it's not really that important, but there's different desktops for Linux. You can see right now I'm using this environment, which is called GNOME, which is just how the windows are are presented. Oh, this guy is done. Next, finish. Uh, so that was Fusion. Now Fusion is installed. You can just search for it, Fusion, and then it just runs. Should pop up on the window over here. Just drag it over. See, there it is. I made it bigger so you guys can see it. But uh, I use I use uh, Fusion to do like basic photo manipulation stuff as well. You can cut stuff, you can paint stuff, you can delete stuff. You can basically have layers and and, and text and, and all those things that you do in Photoshop basically. You can even import Photoshop files I think there. So so there you go. Uh, talking about, again talking about uh, desktops, we can uh, see if there's a few of them. GNOME, GNOME is the one that I'm using and comes with a few. I mean, GNOME, this, this desktop, you can install it in, in any distribution of Linux, basically. Uh, you can install it in Fedora, you can, have, I, you can even download it directly with whatever flavor of your desktop you want. I like GNOME, it's really simple, it gets out of your way. It's, it, you can see it's this, this little bar over here and this, this uh, dock on the bottom that I actually decided to have. You don't need to really have it. Uh, you can just not have that and the only thing you have on desktop is this really little bar there. Uh, and basically what, what, what the environment is, is like this uh, window explorer, like file explorer, it's part of GNOME and uh, and a few more or, or other things that you have for for now, but basically the windows and the exploring of this of the system. Uh, the other one that I used to use a lot is KDE. I used to like KDE a lot, but uh, sadly, um, me disable my white Wacom Tosh thingy. KDE was something that I used to use a lot. And it's it's pretty good as well. If if, if that's how you like to use it, uh, I mean, if that's what you like to use, the type of window, the type of of, of application, it's it's great. Uh, 
sadly for me, it, it wasn't working. There's other ones like XFCE, which is it's more for like, uh, I love the mouse there. <laughs> it's more for like uh, really low end, uh, I mean lightweight, it's very lightweight, okay? That's, that's what I wanna do. Like if you have a computer that's a little bit old, uh, this would be great for it because it just it's really lightweight and it uh, doesn't have any bells and whistles and it will be really fast and it will take advantage of your the hardware you have. But it, again, it's just a way to present your windows and 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 explore your environment. The applications, all the applications will work with any desktop environment. Uh, so don't worry about that really. So. Let's talk a little bit about what scares people, which is the shell or the terminal. Just click all this stuff away and just click the stuff away. And I'm, I, I actually have a shortcut for, for the terminal, but you can open it. Uh, you can just search for it, terminal, and there it is. I have actually several terminals. <laughs> uh, there's different terminals you can use. Uh, let me close Fusion for now. And the terminal is actually really simple. You can press ls to list, and it will list your files. I mean, there's there's even terminal explorers. What is that thing called? I just just forgot. Ranger, Ranger. Yeah, I don't remember. There's even one thing that is an explorer for for this, but uh, you can see this is just basically listing stuff, the folders. If you want to go to a folder, let's say this this Houdini folder, you can just say CD for change directory, and then put the name of it 18.0, uh, and then you just basically just enter that folder. It's the same. It's the same thing as if you had this thing open and say oh this is the folder that you want to go to just double click on it and then you just go into it so what is happening there we go so you can see now you you go to this folder and that's if i if i say ls here it's basically the same thing as when you enter this it just lists the files list the files here so i mean what's the scary part about this there's no scary part about this uh, you can run Houdini from the terminal, of course. Uh, if you, I go to where Houdini is installed, Houdini 18, I can say source. I mean, you don't have to do this because there's just an icon, but this is how you do it if you wanted to run, if you want to run it from terminal, just source the, the environment and then run Houdini FX or whatever version of Houdini you want, you need. The, the very useful thing about this is that it gives you uh, output like this. You see it's loading Arnold, it's, loading, it's searching for a license, you can see I have some errors. This is the actually amazing part about this that uh, you can actually see what if there are some errors and output, you can actually see it. And this is pretty nice to debug stuff when, when application one application is not running or something, you can do this. and. Uh, it will tell you uh, what is happening or why is it not running and, and you can just solve it which is it's actually super useful so yeah I mean it's just it, it's running Houdini the same way it's just an extra I mean it's, it's I guess the desktop or the or the, uh, the, the actually the uh, the key the, the key the shortcut icon is basically just a shortcut for doing typing all this stuff in the command line basically. I mean not all this stuff, it's just two lines that I type here. This line, this line and running Houdini command. It's just, it's just that. I mean it's not scary at all. It's just it's just simple commands. Uh, don't be afraid of it. If you if you're an artist you you cannot I mean you can't avoid this and, and not use it ever, but if you're are more like a TD. You you will use it, and you and there's really a few commands that you need to learn. LS for listing. Uh, sorry, LS for listing. CD for changing directory. Uh, you can see I just 
did that and sent me to the home directory and I just do that and then let's say I'm gonna go to the desktop folder just to desktop and I'm there and I can list that so you can see it's pretty it's pretty simple it's pretty simple stuff CD dot dot to go back one folder and ls to add control c to cancel whatever you you did wrong you can go to see the redshift thing and see what is there you can see there is a cache there cache and call ls and there's some compile shaders say so compile shaders and see that i mean it's really simple stuff it's not not uh, you can just do a lot with just saying ls cd and sudo to launch an application with with uh super user how is what it's called in linux super user uh, authorization or which is basically administration or uh, admin in, in windows and then dot slash to run something if you have a uh, let's go to cd home bin where I have some applications here. Uh, let's see, what do I have here? C Lion, CUDA, uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, let's see, go to Blender. Blender, sorry. Blender, this one. LS, you can see I have this. Let me clear the screen. LS. So you can see I have the command blender here. I can just say for, uh, dot forward slash blender. This just means run blender and it's just gonna run it. You can see it runs, tells you where it's learning the preferences from, found this version of Python, and then you have blender running. So here it is. It ran pretty quickly, but it was in the other window. You can see it blender, it's just there it is. It took me more time to get it to this window to for it to uh, then need to run so you can see this it is there it's running it, it's telling you what is happening which is very useful sometimes to debug stuff which is something that you don't get in, on, on windows something just doesn't run and just just doesn't run and you have to figure out what the hell is going on you know uh, so yeah I mean it's really useful for that kind of thing uh, there's uh what else I, I mean I can talk to you about what software I use if you wanna if you want to uh, you can see I have like in my uh, Explorer here you can see I have this for example our network types I have some games here this is my this is on my NAS I have a NAS over here on my right and this is all my NAS stuff uh, so you can see I have um, I have access to a network I you can have access to any network you can browse Houdini I mean Houdini Windows stuff all that stuff I mean it's it's really simple uh, all the all the software that you that you run on, on for VFX on, on Linux and on Windows and Mac work here uh, CD NVIDIA control server settings I guess you can see the the, the your your monitors here you can manage preferences uh, I have two different cars so you can see the temperature of them uh, the usage of it how much is being used right now this is just being used 37% I guess is for maybe OBS is using that and it's a little hot because of that I could turn on the fan and and raise the fan if I want to just uh, make this a little bit cooler because the fan was a little bit maybe in automatic mode and I could make that cool down if I want to I, I, I use this a lot when I'm doing something like in Redshift I just turn this up to a lot I have a script that runs it, runs it for me and has a little more aggressive curve so it, it, it keeps the temperature down but yeah I mean all the stuff that you can do in Windows and Mac you can do here there's some applications that are not supported like somebody was asking me what do you use for After Effects uh, 
on, on Linux. I don't have a use for After Effects. I haven't used After Effects for many, 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 many years. But if I wanted to do something like After Effects, I can use Resolve, which has um, Resolve has uh, Fusion inside. I don't believe I have Resolve installed here, do I? Because I use it on my other computer over there, which is my editing workstation. And you can in Resolve, you can edit, you can add effects. Because uh, it has Fusion integrated. If you just want to do a composition. You just do it in Fusion or Nuke, which is better. Uh, yes, I said that it's better. Um, what else? If you want to see uh, images, there is DG View, which is great for seeing uh, sequences of images. Uh, what else? I want to keep this short because I don't want to keep talking forever. Uh, da -da 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 -da. But yeah, I mean, if you guys have any questions, let me know and I can answer them. Uh, sadly, I don't remember the questions that were asked uh, in the past stream. Because I, I think I already answered them, actually. But uh, cool, guys, if you have any questions, let me know now. If not, I think that's going to be it for, for right now. Uh, again, you can use anything you like in in on Linux for VFX and it I do think it's way better it, a lot of people ask is it faster than Windows yes it is faster than Windows why is it faster well because Linux has a better integration with with uh, the hardware it's better integrated with GPUs uh, Redshift has said it a bunch of times Linux is fast I mean Redshift is faster than Linux because there is no second layer between the OS and and the GPU. It's just handling the, the, the GPU directly. No, there is no old drivers for for Linux or NVIDIA drivers are exactly the same. People say, oh, we don't have the latest drivers on Linux. We do. We do. For example, right now, in Pop OS, I just stick to whatever what, uh, Pop OS is is actually releasing because I don't want to install anything manually. Really, I just I just don't want to. I, I don't I don't want to. I could let me change this to whatever in, uh, United States because you guys want to see it in English I guess. Uh, but. For what what driver do I have? I have I think 440 440 hundred, which is pretty good. I'm I'm good with that driver. It's pretty new. Uh, it's new enough that it's not breaking. I mean, it's new enough that it supports all the new stuff, and it's not new enough so that it can crash. But uh, yeah, you can see you can have let's say if you have 20. 2080 Ti card, and you want to have the drivers for Linux uh, 64 bit and search that, you will find your, your drivers. I mean, this one that's but that has been distributed by, by Pop OS will be just good enough for driving that. You can see it's 440, 450, 57 is the, the one that is available right now. The other one here is this one is the one I have. This is the the latest, the stable one, and this is for June 24, which is not old. This is July 9, which is what uh, three days old. <laughs> I really don't want to install a three days old driver, but if you want that, it is available. I mean, So in simple words, Linux is better than Windows for new machines and new CPUs. What Linux version? Uh, I mean, Pika, if you if you need to use if you don't need to use Maya, just go for for Pop OS. Pop OS is great, and it's it's really great for for beginners as well because it's really 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 friendly. Like it just it just it's just like like any other. Pro, uh, application you have your calendar you have your 
widgets. You can install a bunch of these things. I, I install a lot of extensions. They're called extensions. You can you can customize your uh, you can customize your interface a lot. I do that a lot actually. This this look is not the default for Pop OS. I just I just tweak it, and there's a tweak tweak application. If you want, if you need to install applications like Maya, specifically Maya, if you need Maya, I think Fedora is a little bit better for that. But because just of Maya, if you want, if you don't need Maya, you can just go for Pop OS, and it's just great. And you can see, you can go to the appearance, and you can change the appearance of this a lot. Like I have this uh, Mojave kind of look, but this is the Pop standard look. You can see you can change your look of the, you can change the look of your icons of course I'm just faking that I have kind of like a Mac so you see I can change the look of the icons uh, where's the pop icons pop here just the default icons you can just download a ton of icons and, and change them here no mix see I have a ton of different icons just go to something like home you can see there's a bunch of different icons and change the whole change the whole thing uh, even the cursor uh, you can change I don't know breeze dark just a bunch of different themes that you can you can just make it look whatever I just like to be uh, smart ass and <laughs> and kind of make it look a little bit like like Mac but I, the only thing is because this is this the smaller uh, one that I found with this top bar that just makes it really small. Uh, but yeah, you can change your icons to whatever, even that, <laughs> like whatever icons you want. You can just basically find find them online and then just install them. Uh, and there's some pretty crazy ones, uh, so you can just make it make it look however you want uh, I try not to spend so much time doing that because <laughs> you can't spend too much time doing that uh, icons humanity so you can make it look however you want you can make it look like KDE uh, yeah so for for also somebody asked if, if the uh, sub the the algorithmic stuff works, and you can see it does. You can see I have designer here, uh, and I have painter as well. See, this is substance designer, and it's running painter here. Uh, let's see, I had some. Oh, this one. Uh, what is it? Our oh, new version. I, I, I don't want to get the new version. This is saying that I should activate. Okay. I don't have activated painter, but it works. You see, this is this is substance and it works. It just does whatever substance does in, in, in real life. Just plug something here. See, it, just, it works. Just does, does whatever substance does. Uniform color. You can do. Uh, uh, blend just uh, blend this thing with this thing and we have that thing and we have that and we can see this in 3d oh that is not how you do it I always forget that is the right click that you have to drag it and you can see it works just like whatever you do I drag this a lot seems like uh, Man, I just dragged it so much. So yeah, you can just do whatever. I mean, this and this, for example, this. This is um, an application that that it, it's not distributed as. Uh, let me let me just find it and, and show it to you what it comes like. Uh, let me find this really quickly. Uh, let me just find the algorithmic substance painter. Uh, 
So people said that uh, you can install this, but I'm like, why? What the hell? What are you saying? Oh, I don't have the latest version here, I guess. Designer. Designer. Well, I can just show you this. I'm gonna copy this to this temp folder we've been using. So, let me just cl close this designer. Because people said that, uh, well, you can install this and you can install that, and, and uh, an RPM file is not the same as a dev file, but it is. Uh, what do you use for backing up? Uh, I, I basically use my, my NAS as a backup. If you want to actually have a backup, I don't have a specific backup. Sorry, but I don't. But if there is there is uh, an application for doing that, which is called TimeShift, it's pretty similar to what um, to what Mac has. I don't know how it's called, but this thing makes a backup of your your complete OS. You can see I have one from yesterday, seems like, and uh, one from from a day before. No. A week before I I, th I think I do one backup a week oh a time machine yeah so this is called time shift this it's basically they are kind of copying that but yeah and then you can just use this to put where you want your web backup why you backup what stuff you backing up and all that thing but so yeah you can use this, this time shift application to do the same thing as time machine does and and yeah you can use you can do that for backup. So this substance uh, thing, you can see this is an RPM, which is something that you would use in CentOS or Fedora. And people say like, well, you can install that. Well, if you double click it, it's basically, I just double click it twice. It's basically just an archive or a zip file. It's, you can just see it as a zip file, really. Uh, and the, the thing is that you can just extract it and install it. You can even convert this to, you can see this is just basically a, uh, this is just a zip file uh, with some stuff inside and that's it. So you really can just extract this thing, extract it and just put it wherever you want and run it. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's really similar to Mac. I mean, Mac has this sense as well that you just put an, an app thing is basically just like a, a compressed file that has the, the whole application inside of it. So you can do kind of the same thing here. You can see this thing is extracting and it's going to it's going to extract whatever um, whatever path it was on the on the file. So in this case you can see it's extracting this opt file which is where where you mostly most of the time you just put applications on but if you go here you can see this the algorithm folder substance designer and substance designer will be here somewhere here it is you can just double click in and it will run uh, maybe yeah you can see it's running uh, it requires some access to I guess for the license and you can see this is an old version of, of designer this is 2018 but that's it. I mean, I did nothing to this. I just extract it and run it. Uh, I mean, see, I mean, if you if you're clever, uh, a clever company like this one that just does stuff like this, not not put stupid things on on weird installers and old libraries that that they don't distribute. Uh, your application should run anywhere, anytime. It should run the same way in any Linux version that you have. So yeah, I mean, you can see they they provide their own libraries. They say, well, the application we made needs these libraries to run. So there you go, because those libraries are free. I mean, most of these things are free. Like libqt is is freely distributable because they they pay already for developing with that with it so they can do that and yeah I mean and you can just move this this folder to wherever you want to have it 
and you can just run it from there. Just you would have to create an, a launcher, but I already ch show you how to do that for for what do we create for uh, Nook. So yeah, training Houdini and Nook. Um, what are you interested in in, in Houdini and Nook? Because I haven't done anything like that. Uh, all right. Uh, what else? I mean, if you want stuff like the Adobe Suite, that, that's never gonna happen. Like that is not things that are gonna be available on Linux ever, ever. I don't think it's gonna ever gonna be available. So yeah, I don't. I don't really have a need for it. I do have another computer that I have Windows on, which is that one behind me, over there. And I have Photoshop on that one. If I ever need actually Photoshop, I I can use that one. Uh, Dynamics in Houdini in general. Uh, uh, okay. You need to be a little bit more specific because I don't. I don't, I mean, I'm not going to cover everything in, in Dynamics in Houdini in one training. It's just a lot of stuff. But yeah, there is one training for Dynamics that um, I have to finish. Uh, it's not done, but uh, it was started on Patreon. Then I decided to kill the Patreon courses and I stopped that and I need to just do it, I guess. Uh, all right. so. That's it, I think. Unless you guys have any other questions about Linux. Um, the only problematic thing on Linux is Maya, really. <laughs> Maya is the only problematic thing. Like, Blender has their own libraries and it runs everywhere. Everything runs everywhere except Maya. Maya is the only thing that is just stupid. Uh, it's just... It's just yeah, Maya is the only the only thing that is just like, nah, I don't want to run. I don't want to run anywhere. I just just gonna be uh, stupid and stuff. But anyway, so are there any questions or should, uh, particle based dynamics and destruction? Yeah, that's basically the plan that I have. <laughs> So hopefully you guys are a little bit more, um, uh, how can I say this, a little bit more less afraid of Linux, I guess. And if you need to use Houdini on Linux or any other applications, you should be fine. Um, Linux is a better choice. It is actually it's a better choice for a lot of reasons that I haven't mentioned, but yeah, uh, there is a lot of reasons that uh, Linux is best for, and specifically with hard, uh, over-the-top applications like the ones we need to use for for visual effects that they need a lot of uh, hardware to run. It's better because it takes better. Uh, use of your hardware. It's just it's just better using the hardware. And if you have something that is being, let's say, an, a, a laptop that is a little old in on in Windows and it feels low and stuff, you install Linux. It, it feels like it's new again. <laughs> like what the hell? What what? I was about to throw this laptop away and and you put Linux on it. It seems like it's new again. And you're like what? Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Linux is just does a way better job using your hardware. Uh, could you do a video on using camera tracking data in Houdini? Hmm, but all, all the things you're saying, guys, is, is exactly what that tutorial is about. <laughs> I can actually show you, let me show you what I'm, what I'm talking about. It's one that I started on Patreon, but I had to just kill it because it wasn't the, the Patreon thing wasn't working for me. But uh, 
it's called FX Guru 2. So you can see there's even some lessons here that we start, but all these lessons are going to be redone, really. Uh, you can see there's some assets that we already did for this lesson when I had a, an employee, but this is the this is the uh, the shot that is going to be created in that. Uh, let me actually, I'm not showing you what I'm seeing. Stupid me again. So this is this is there are some lessons that have been done for this and these lessons will be you can see there's some shelves some products uh, there was some use things done uh, so basically we are going we're recreating this part here of this movie this part here, hopefully you guys can see that. So there's a um, some cracks on the floor, all that, and then all this scene, all this scene, and then all this scene. So that's actually from the movie 2012, but that shot is what what is going to be created. It, it's really, really, really great stuff. Uh, much of it was already done or is done. I will redo it with the new things that in Houdini, but yeah, you can see some lessons were already done, like three lessons were done with this uh, already. And there's, some, there's tracking, there's adding, uh, that stuff in Houdini, you can see there's some tracking here. Of, again, as I said, these lessons will be redone for the new for the new uh, version. But uh, yeah, I mean, all the stuff that you guys are, are talking about right now, that's gonna be part of this big, big, big kind of training. Uh, it's on the works, it will happen. But uh, right now, it's still on uh, on the bench. It's still on the queue. But uh, yeah, we'll come soon. I promise that. All right, guys. Um, that's it. That's Linux for you. Everything I do, I do it on Linux. So I mean, it's doable, I guess. <laughs> I'm streaming on Linux right now. Uh, the only thing I use Windows for is basically Unreal Engine. That's uh, you can compile Unreal Engine for Linux, but it's not the same, really. So uh, the only thing I use Windows right now is for Unreal Engine, and that's it. Uh, yeah. All right, guys, that is gonna be it for me. Thank you for joining me. Uh, sorry for the. Uh, the other stream they got caught and uh, I don't know what happened it was just basically it just got caught and, and then the power went off we didn't have power for about an hour and, uh, and yeah it was bad all right that's it for me guys enjoy the rest of your weekend if you already still I mean if you still are in the weekend and if not enjoy your Monday enjoy your week um, love what you do and I will see you uh, in next Sunday, okay? Next Sunday also. Every Sunday we will be streaming. So, see you next Sunday, right? Do some Houdini on Linux stuff, all right? Guys, thank you again. And bye. That's it. That's it for me. If you have any more questions or stuff or things you want me to cover on these learn days, Post them on the community, and the community is at uh, mix-training, mix-training.com. Just go there and click this button here, community support. Click on it, and then it will take you to Discord. And Discord is pretty amazing. There's a ton of amazing people there. Join it. You can see people. Uh, share what they're working on there's some really amazing stuff people are working on uh, 
and all sorts of things and there's a lot of people that are just are amazing at helping out there like there's things that are super advanced people that are just starting there's all sorts of people there there's even one channel in Spanish if you want to go and talk about in Spanish if that's what the you see there's some work in progress stuff here from Juan which is look at that that's amazing so yeah there's a bunch of things you can see really cool stuff I, I really really encourage you guys to just go there and you can see people are posting as we speak I think <laughs> uh, which is great actually I, you're not seeing that huh. again if you go to mix mix dash training.com go here to community support click on it it will take you to discord and uh, there's a bunch of cool stuff here I have to repeat myself because I just forgot to change the camera you can see people just share a bunch of cool projects you can see uh, Visconti is doing this kind of escape kind of sequence here with a bunch of uh, effects I, it's not running I'm sure why it's not running it's not loading I can I can load I can yeah, open this code over here and you can see there's work in progress stuff uh, what is the work in progress thing is uh, work in progress see there is uh, I'm, not I'm not sure why you can see now this person just posted a uh, tree falling on a house which looks pretty cool uh, this is Jonathan is doing something like that which is great uh, this is the beast content that I was just trying to show you guys I'm not sure why it's not running you just click on it there you can see this is cool stuff he's doing he's been improving a lot the, he asked for uh, feedback there people just give him feedback and, and he's been improving a lot of things so yeah it's it's a really amazing community really a lot of helpful helpful people there you can talk about code stuff about the tutorials if you have any questions step two etc you have inspiring things and uh, things that keep you inspired and stuff so yeah I really recommend you guys uh, check it out and uh, it's a really good cool way to to stay in touch with everyone uh, I also need a place for a bit mid-level questions yeah just go there man just go there and there's a lot of professionals there there's people that work as studios that are part of the community there's people that are starting and there's people that are in the in in the mid level and there's people that are working at big big studios that are part of the community as well and they can help you with stuff there so yeah I really recommend you just go there and, and check it out alright guys uh, thank you very much I will finish the stream now and I will see you next Sunday right thanks again and let's keep learning together cheers <laughs>